Hello, and welcome to the South Coast Artist Index, where artists, performers, and writers, as well as curators, directors, and supporters, anyone with ties to the creative community, drops by to introduce themselves to you. We'll talk about their beginnings, their vision, their passion, and so much more. The South Coast Artist Index podcast is brought to you in part by Heavenly Spirits, who invites you to celebrate the art of life and creative communities everywhere. Learn more at heavenlyspirits.com. This is Ron Forty with another episode of uh, the In Focus podcast brought to you by the South Coast Artist Index. And uh, today's guest, I'm going to have her introduce herself um, and uh, you know, give us her name and spell her name. Uh, and uh, we do that for the serious reason is because sometimes people are traveling and uh, they think they hear one name when it's another name. Uh, and you know how we speak around here in, in near Boston. <laughs> so uh, with, with that in mind, um, could you uh, just tell us uh, your name and uh, spell it for us, please? Okay. My name is Pat Kumi Thornton. And Pat, P-A-T, Kumi is C-O-O-M-E-Y. And Thornton is T-H-O-R-N-T-O-N. The thorn has to be in there, you know. So yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the whole, and Kumi has an extra O, it's not Comey, even though my father's name was James. <laughs> oh, and that's the reason why I ask is because it's amazing what seems so uh, normal, uh, you know, some people's names, it's the most bizarre thing that, uh, that you can run against. Um, uh, the yeah. best one still uh, to this day is my first intern that I had at an advertising agency that I worked at, and her name was Ann Margaret. Oh, okay. And she was so frustrated because people kept asking her for a last name that she would say, it's Margaret. It's like, oh, no, no, dear, that's your middle name. <laughs> She's like, Don't you think I know what my, my middle name is? Well, what is yeah. your middle name? I don't have one. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's my, yeah. that's like my, my grandmother's name was Mary Ring. No middle name. That's M-A-R-Y-R-I-N-G. Mary Ring. That was it. She was from Norway, too. Really? So, I think they changed her name. Along yeah. The way. Yeah. Um, Pat, you you have a, a really interesting story, and um, um, I'd I'd like you to to tell it uh, uh, to us. I mean, you are an artist uh, in your own right, correct? Oh yeah. Okay. And <laughs> uh, and you are married to an artist. Uh, in, right. In his own right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That, that's right. why I kept my middle name, mm -hmm. actually. So, so where do you want me to begin? You know, it's a long story, um, but I can make it short. Begin, begin at the beginning, uh, especially now. Um, 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 it's it's so important to get the memories down, and that's yeah. really what this is all about. Okay. Well, my maiden name was Patricia Thornton. My middle name was Marie. <laughs> and um, I always, always loved art. I think uh, my mother was artistic. She had some drawings around that she had, had attempted to do when she was young. But her father did not want her to think about being an artist. And he wanted her to go to, to learn how to type and get a job somewhere. You know, this was in Worcester, Massachusetts. And it was quite a long time ago. So she um, and my father both encouraged me along the way because they, she, my father was very empathetic that my mother didn't really get the kind of support that she wanted. So he was really gung ho for me to do what I wanted, to, for me to be able to do what I wanted to do. And I can remember being you know, very visual, always seeing things and commenting on them from the time I practically could talk, you know, and, and then also picking up a pencil and drawing things from, I think I have even one from when I was five years old, a drawing from that, that point in time, which was a long time ago. So then of course, when I went to school, I was always one of the better uh, art students in the classroom. So that's another positive reinforcement there. And I went to a um, high school that had a kind of emphasis part, their art department was known in Worcester Mass to be very strong. 
which gave me the opportunity to do some, what I would consider some really, we had, we drew from a model, but not, not a nude model in the public school, a clothed model, but we actually could draw from a model, if you can believe that. And the result of that is that I had developed a, a really good portfolio. So when I applied to art school, I applied to Mass Art was the only place I applied because the tuition was then was only two hundred dollars a year, and we just ruled out anything like Rhode Island School of Design because they my parents said, "Oh, that's too expensive." I think that was six hundred dollars a year, <laughs> and so I got accepted right away to Mass Art, and that was the that was the beginning. Um, and it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Big, big change, moved to Boston, and that was a big change. And, um, and then majored in painting. We had two years of foundation studies and then majored in, in painting. I don't know why, you know, at this point, it's just, I think I was kind of romantic um, and liked the aura of the whole thing and remember reading about different artists and of course in art history we saw a lot of art history so it was just what I felt that I wanted to do and uh, when I graduated I, I also applied to graduate school and got in which was in Florence, Italy and lucky me I had a full scholarship to go there from the school so that made it a lot easier <laughs> financially. And so both the, the thing, the, the um, fact that I went from Worcester kind of, I don't know, it's not, a, it's a small city. It's not a small town, but a small kind of environment with a lot of cousins. I was the oldest of all my cousins, a lot of family around. My father was one of five. My mother was one of three. Um, and then went to Boston. That was like a leap and, suddenly I was feeling a little more cosmopolitan. And then going to Italy, it, that was a big, big game changer to experience the, um, the culture, which was so beautiful, and the history, which was just, it's, what can I say? It's, it's, it takes you out of the present um, in a way that connects you in time over time and it makes time be something different than it was for me before I got there. So that it was an amazing experience, I have to say. And so I spent two years in Italy, two separate years. One, I got the MA and then my, when, when I was going home, my father died of a heart attack. So before I even got home for the summer. And so I stayed home and went back two years later for another year to finish the mm -hmm. MFA. So, and then after that, when I got out, I tried to get a job, but be, because my, I wanted to help my mother in some way and be there for her, um, I didn't feel, well, I was applying for jobs, but it was also Vietnam War. So there were very few teaching jobs available because everybody who went to art school applied for teaching jobs at, in colleges at that time. But I did get one, a job finally, at um, the Worcester Art Museum School, which at that time was affiliated with Clark University. And before it became, they shut the school down about 10 years later and it became all um, a community education at that point. So, <clears throat> and at the time they closed it down was the time I got married to John Thornton. And so then I was in Boston, so that was okay. And I started focusing even more on being an artist. And, um, and I had a gallery, I got a gallery and I was in shows, a couple of shows, Newbury Street in the South End and at, um, Brandeis University at the Rose Art Museum. And so things were cooking along. And then John decided it would be a good idea to leave Boston. And I had a, a baby. Wow. <laughs> so, In the middle of all that. Yes. <laughs> now, may I, may I ask you before I forget, 
Was John, uh, where was his career at that point in time in Boston? Yeah, so that's, that's a good question because he was, um, he had been teaching at MassArt and then I guess he had left his full-time position wanting to be a full-time artist. So, uh, and that's before I met him because I, I did meet him actually, I didn't meet him, I saw him at MassArt. When I was at MassArt, he was teaching their painting students, but I think when I was a junior, he was teaching seniors, and when I was a senior, he was teaching juniors. So I never had him as a, as a teacher, but I remember him in the building. So uh, at this point, he had had he had been in a he had been in a show at the a Whitney Biennial. He had had shows at the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston. He was with I'm trying to remember the name of the gallery gallery he was with in Boston, which escapes me at this moment. So he was pretty. He was uh, chugging along with his career, but um, I would say it probably was a mistake that he left New York. <laughs> and that was with, when he was married to his first wife and then he's divorced. He moved, they moved to Boston, then he got divorced. Mm -hmm. So this was a number of years, you know. I just, so, uh, yeah. again, again, before I forget, um, was he considered one of the Boston Expressionists? Um, I don't know. No, he like like Mitchell was. Who was? Who are some? Oh, of them? Jack Wolf was one of them, and uh, I can't remember the the, the rest of them. Uh, and I'll I'll tell you later about Jack Wolf. I I spoke with Laurie, uh, his his uh, his widow. Um, uh -huh. So you you were there um, in a very exciting time, both you and John. I mean, there was a lot going on in the city. Yeah. I probably unprecedented uh, comparative uh, to today. Yeah, really. Yeah, absolutely, Ron. It was, Newbury Street was hopping. And I mean, Newbury Street, when I was in college, too, was hopping. And Pace Gallery was there, or, or Arnie Glimshaw was there anyway. I don't know if it was called the Pace Gallery then. But you would just on a Saturday go from gallery to gallery all the way up Newbury Street and see things. And then by the time I got back there again after, after graduate school, after teaching, and getting married, this gallery scene started to change a little bit. Um, and the galleries were moving to the South End. And I was in Cutler Stavridis Gallery at that point. And, uh, and then, I, what is it? I'm, you know, it's been a long, a long life so far for both of us. <laughs> and then I think there was some economic downturn. And then galleries started closing. And also, John had to sell his house, uh, the house we were living in, because he's, they had an agreement that he could stay there because his two kids were in Boston until a certain point, and then they would dissolve the house and his wife would get half of the money, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that, that's when we moved to New Bedford. And that was a fluke because he was kayaking down here one day. He used to kayak in Little Compton, I guess, but. This day, I don't know if he was in Westport, he liked to explore all the rivers. And he went to downtown New Bedford to get gas for his car and, and he liked it. And he said to someone, are there any houses for sale around here? And they said, go see Whale, go see John Bullard at Whale. So honest to God, he called me up and he said, Patty, get in the car, come down here. I want you to see this house. <laughs> and uh, it was a wreck. It was a complete and total wreck thing. So anyway, we ended up buying it and he ended up renovating the whole thing from top to bottom. It was, you know, he was a real project person. He could do anything really. He was mm -hmm. extremely um, focused and able. And at the same time he was painting. Oh, I mean, I have thousands of paintings in this house that are his. So, but then I had to go back to work because there was another economic downturn, I think in, in the 86 or something like that. And um, so then I started working at RISD in administration, which was a completely new and different thing to me. Because at, at the Worcester Art Museum, I taught college level drawing and painting, I, which I loved. And before we got married, John said, how secure is your job? And I said, oh, I love my job. I'm going to do this forever. <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> so he said, oh, that's great. And then no sooner had I said that than the school closed and I didn't have a job. 
So anyway, we're down here in New Bedford and I got a job at RISD in administration, which I had never done before. So it was a whole new ball of wax for sure, but it was, it was a job and it was in an art environment, which I really loved being there, you know. And then I painted and had, uh, eventually I had, totally, I had two kids, three years apart, a girl and a boy. And then I was at RISD for 20 years. <laughs> wow. And, Time and then, flies. Yeah, really. <laughs> commuting, commuting for 20 years. Oh, Providence. God bless yeah. you. <laughs> oh, my God. The Washington Bridge. <laughs> How many times was I late for work? I can't even, can't even count the, the number of times being stuck there on the bridge. Unbelievable. No matter what time I left in the morning. And mm. I worked for um, Roger Mandel, who now lives down here, and his wife is an artist, Gail Mandel. And when he left RISD, he retired. And that's when the new president was coming in, and they reshuffled me to another office. And then after a year, they downsized um, and gave early, offered early retirement to a lot of people. But you really felt like you had to take it, you know? Well, it didn't feel so much like, oh, I don't know, maybe I won't retire yet. It felt like, okay, I better take this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we did. And they're on a, quite a downturn right now. They're laying off. It's, I, I, they're on very wobbly ground right now. Uh, it was in the news. Uh, but then again, a lot of institutions are. This pandemic has um, exposed a lot of, uh, um, uh, what do we call it? Um, oh, the weaknesses, the weakness. weaknesses to a daylight. Yeah. 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 All the weak links. It's like, well, even strong links. It's just, uh, it's, it's so, uh, this is my phone. I've got to turn this off or something. Well, let me see. They're dinging away here. Yeah. All well, right. that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's, the, it's Datma because you know I'm I'm involved with the design, art, and technology. I was I, I was going to get I was going to get to uh, to Datma. Uh, could you uh, <laughs> uh, explain design, art, technology, mass? Is that what it is? Yes, that's basically okay. what it is. Uh, mass is in Massachusetts. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. So it's it's just um, some of the people want me to go. Evidently, there that we have we just put in another installation projection installation downtown. We actually, downtown New Bedford, we actually up, so this is the beginning of July. I think it was May when we made the decision to move forward and not postpone. We were talking about postponing everything, but we decided because we had, we could keep a dis safe distance and it can be something you could see without having to gather all together. Um, and it was, we don't didn't have a building. You don't have to go inside. You can look from the outside. So we decided to continue with what we were some some of what we were going to offer mm -hmm. this summer and so that's going on right now for sure um and, yeah uh <clears throat> the addition of datma to the um art scene uh just seems to be like another jewel in the crown in the in the crown <laughs> yeah. um I mean, you can think back to just <laughs> 10 years ago where there was very little happening. Um, even though we, the city was recognized as one of the 10 most creative in the United States. Oh, right, right. Uh, Richard right. Florida's um, yes, right. Um, uh, assessment. And then uh, following that, at least four national or international rankings. Um, and that was then. And so much has happened. I mean, I, I just being away for a year in Portugal and coming back and noticing so much change uh, between 2016 and 2017, it was, it's quite awesome. Yes, yes. I think, um, well, Roger Mandel is a, a real force. You know, he really is very idealistic he, and he's very able to make things happen. And he has a broad network from his really amazing experience in, in the arts from starting when he went to Williams College till until now. So mm -hmm. 
he's able to, and he spends, he has a tremendous focus and energy and he spends a tremendous amount of time to bring things together. And he's, he's a really good leader, I would say, you know, he really knows how to um, support people and listen to people and, and make things happen. So we're really lucky to have him, I would say, here. Who are some of the other people involved with that, Mom? Well, Lindsay, you know Lindsay Me. She's the director. And um, and then there's, uh, I don't know if you know Eva Brito. She's an artist. She's a performance artist here in town. And she's on the board. And then there's um, some, some other people who uh, are on the board and live in South Dartmouth or Westport. And, uh, and is there a... a for a while, there was someone from Mattapoise or Marion, but so it's it's not a very big board, but it's very active, very active. Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Why did you uh, decide to get involved with that? Well, I initially, you know, Roger was kicking around the idea for quite a long time before he actually decided to launch it. So he would get people together, and he would invite me to come over and listen and see what I thought about things and so eventually when he decided to have a board he asked me if I wanted to be on it and I had never been on a board before Ron I'd never been asked to be on a board <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like oh, oh okay that sounds good here I'm, since I live in New Bedford downtown mm -hmm. New Bedford and uh, so it's been pretty it we only have one employee I think and one part-time helper here and there so it's almost like the border staff in a way. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> when I was at RISD, my job for a long time was with continuing education, designing educational programs. So this was something that um, I could bring, you know, to the table is the experience of designing programs. I mean, the continuing ed at RISD was a very highly successful endeavor for the school They're in many ways you know community engagement but also revenue for them it was pretty good well we had a lot of uh, a lot of artists who uh, eked their way through through uh, continuing education because they couldn't possibly attend day school um, and then they also got a lot of uh, other um, components uh, for their education Right, yeah. right. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great resource for the community. I mean, I think it's a, a very, um, very worthwhile endeavor for everybody involved, to say the least, from all ages. Mm -hmm. also. All it, so it, it, it has a, a broad net, not to mention international as, as well, you know, so. So in the meantime, with all of this work, and my full time job, which I took the early retirement and left. Um, you know, I've been, I have my studio downstairs and John has a studio upstairs. And John's now in a nursing home, unfortunately, because he can't stand up, he can't walk. He's, he has a lot of his congestive heart failure. He has a lot of problems resulting from an infection that wasn't found. And he went with an infection for a couple of weeks and, mm -hmm. and he was in the ICU a couple of years ago. So. But it, it, so it did a lot of damage actually, you know, to him. So he can't, he can't really take care of himself. I can't take care of him anymore. So he's there, 86 years old, mind you. And our yeah. children are in New York and our children are both, uh, one's an architect and the other is a fa fashion designer. <laughs> so there, but my fashion designer daughter who was working for some really good brands over the last 10 years got just got laid off so but my son is not laid off so far yeah it's uh it, it, th this pandemic uh is is truly the um the um um chinese um Trying to think of the term for the Chinese script, but their 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 lettering oh, uh, yeah. just, as blanking out that the the their word for change contains 
two words in in it, and it's oh. one is one is opportunity and the other one is chaos. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, is it an ideogram? Uh, oh, anyway, I just blanked out on that. Yeah, but, we have to look it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exa it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's why when 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 the, this really gets going and we get grant money and stuff, I can have people in the background looking stuff up for me. <laughs> <laughs> Flashcards. Yeah, you get flashcards. Yeah, exactly. Or right. they'll probably even be able to just message me on the screen so I can see it. But um, right. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there are there. You know, there, there's a lot going on. But I mean, we've uh, lived through all of those recessions. I, I know when I left the University of Miami in '77, uh, that was when we were going from um, uh, Cotter to Reagan. And that was a mess. Oh, yes, uh, yeah. And we, you know, we're not even talking about the messes previous with, with right. Nixon and, and going, right, right. going back to undergraduate years. And then um, again, the, the economies just kept going up and down. And anybody in the arts, uh, if, you, if you had a teaching position or worked for a university and held onto it, or uh, um, uh, yeah, any yeah. sort of educational institution, you were lucky because you it was a revolving lucky. door for, for quite a long time. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, yeah. Um, now, um, are you uh, exhibiting now currently, or do you have time for that? Or well, I I I have time. Um, I mean, I'm always busy. I, mm -hmm. I think, well, how? What did I do today? Hmm, I can't. You know, it's like. <laughs> well, you have to stay active, and you know. I mean, I feel like I always have. I'm. I always feel like I'm like way behind doing everything, but. Um, and I'm trying to catch up. I'm running after the bus. You, you yeah. wouldn't be a Virgo, would you? Almost. Almost. <laughs> almost. Close, I'm, huh? <laughs> I'm Leo. But oh, okay. With, but I have Virgo everything else, moon and rising. And yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, it's, so I'm, I wor have been working in my studio, but now that um, John, and John has, is in the nursing home, and the whole upstairs was his studio. And it was, by the time he went to the nursing home, he had, he was kind of a pack rat to say the least. I mean, he had, he was very organized. So it wasn't like a you know, hoarder or anything, but he was so productive and he kept everything. And he was, he had everything segmented. His works on paper area was separated from his working on oil painting area from his desk for, for doing business and, and doing drafting if you needed to do that and so there's so much up there I'm, i pe people when they come here they say you can never move <laughs> <laughs> and this is after i've already organized some things to right. some degree but yeah. so i've been steadily painting along and right right now actually john and i have a show in City Hall, the invisible show on the second floor. <laughs> and I'm in the, all, my, some gouaches, small gouaches are also in the Stephen Ashley room. But no one's been there, you know, this, it went up and then everything closed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what's gonna, what's gonna happen. I mean, I, I imagine things will open and then it'll come down, you know, that kind of thing. Um, have you and John ever collaborated? I mean, other than having a show together, have, have you ever collaborated on 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 anything? Um, no, absolutely not. John was not a collaborative type at all. He was a one man show, <laughs> and um, that was okay. That we because I think what happened is um, our works, I think, are very complementary. Somehow, like they're hang, they hang together. We were in a show at Dee Shattuck uh, a few years back. And now we're in this show at um, at City Hall. Were we in any others? I don't know. But I, so our work is is very compatible, but very different. I would say. However, I feel like I he's influenced me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I influenced him though. <laughs> is he still into the geometric phase? Because the the only work I've seen uh, up close and personal has been at the the Claire Connie uh, Library at UMA, at the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth. Oh yeah, and that that was the that was more expressionist. Those big, huge, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the seasons, the seasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but now he's he's been doing more geometric things ever since then. Those were huge. Like when I met him, and he was living in Boston, 
those were on his walls in his house in Boston. Mm -hmm. So when I saw them, I, I started, I liked him better once I saw the, his paintings. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. What, is there a difference between him and his work? Um, let's see. You know, he's kind of a um, mystery in a lot of ways because I, I feel like, yeah, I feel like he, well, he majored in engineering in college and his mother was an artist and she was the head of the city new york city museum program and in industrial arts mm -hmm. and um so he didn't want to be he i don't think they thought it was a good idea for him to be an artist and plus he wanted to go to princeton so his he got into princeton and majored in engineering he liked figuring out how things work you know he was really I mean, he was making things and putting things together from the time he was a little kid and uh, and designing things. So he graduated from that and then he was a product designer for a while for Henry Dreyfus and for General Electric. And and, uh, and then I guess he said, no, he wanted to be a painter. So then he gave up all of the uh, jobs that had to do with a much more geometric or industrial approach. But in the meantime, he still was very engaged with geometry and measurements and repetition. I think some of his um, work down here had a lot to do, and even in Boston too, because when he was kayaking, he really liked the rhythm of the paddle and the water and the waves and so forth. And I think that generated some of the geometric, uh, more geometric images. Mm -hmm. Because before that he had, when he was in the Whitney Biennial, they were very linear, very simple, almost cartoon-like images uh, that he translated into paintings, very still, quiet paintings. Um, and that's what was in the Whitney Biennial, some of those, one of those anyway. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what he had at the, I think, the ICA, and he did sculpture as well. So I think he went from imagery that had to do with his experience of cartooning, and I guess he was the cartoonist for the Princeton Daily Newspaper or something, and then um, then he was painting and kind of used some of his cartoon ideas or way of simplifying images, mm -hmm. and then moved toward more geometry, um, and I, he's been doing mostly more geometric or some linear things, but the line, it's not a free line. It's not a gesture. Mm -hmm. It's more of a uh, measured oh, line. Oh, controlled head. line. Yeah, uh, an edged yeah. line, yeah. Yeah, and the same thickness at the beginning as at the end. You'd measure, you would take, you know, a, not a ruler, but something, and you'd make sure it was all the same width and so forth. Yeah, like a calip uh, uh, caliper yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so he's... Um, he was, he's kind of, a, he was very, could be very outgoing. He's, he, I don't know, he's, um, I guess you would think maybe he was a Gemini or something, but he wasn't. <laughs> he's, but he was too, he, very, from one extreme to another, he's very, he could be very outgoing and gregarious, and then he could be very, very quiet and with, withholding a lot of what he's thinking, you know, so bo both extremes, really. Yeah. Probably yeah. nothing in the middle. <laughs> yeah, so either either one or the other. Yeah, uh, correct. Yeah. Um, now, how has, <clears throat> I mean, other than affecting your life, how has the pandemic affected your art? Well, I haven't been able to do much of art at the moment um, with the pandemic. My, I'm dying to get back to my, I'm trying to organize my studio and put things away. And, and I'm also trying to organize John's studio but I'm very eager to get back. And I think the way it's affected my thinking about how I want to proceed has to do with, um, I, want to, I want to do things that are really meaningful to me and not think about showing or anything like that. I just want, I want it to be a, almost like a meditation, something that I, is spiritually fulfilling and forget about everything else. Forget about everything, you know? So. Um, 
How important is selling your work? Because you just reminded me of somebody that I live with, uh, you know, who, who, who asked me, do you want to be sustained or do you want to be supported? And I said, well, can I have both, please? <laughs> no, you have to choose one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not very, you know, like a lot of artists, I'm not, I mean, a lot of artists are good at, at getting the word out of selling. This. I'm not, I'm not very good at that, to tell you the truth. I'm not, I, and at this point in my life, in my age and being older and everything, I just, um, it, that it's not something I enjoy. It is not something I'm good at. So I feel like it, it doesn't, I don't need to do that, try that anymore. Why do that to myself? <laughs> so sales don't equal validation for you. Right, right. Okay. I, I did some um, work because I took a course in, when I was going to retire, I took a course in digital textile design, something like that. And so I did, but I, well, I would take my abstract kind of expressionist type uh, work and use that as a foundation for making a repeat of some kind. And then having some scarves printed, I started having them printed in China and then I, Found, um, and then I had some printed on cashmere. So that was kind of interesting. And I made a little bit of money, but so little <laughs> because I, I don't know, I'm not really good at marketing and I don't really want to spend the time, my, the, my time doing that marketing thing. Now. Yeah, the, the marketing thing is difficult. And now I just remembered how I first quote unquote met you was because you were kind enough to uh, give uh, Paula and I a, a reference, my wife Paula and I, um, of spoon flour for the printing. And you know, it's still, ah. we, st we were never, we, we were never satisfied. It's so difficult to find ah. a printer. And then we found uh, one called Bags of Love in London, but they're all, they're all Chinese. They're all, they're all yeah, done there. Right, right, right. And uh, it was weird because what they call the Paris chiffon, which was polyester, Oh, <laughs> took, took the ink better yeah, than right. the silk. The silk looked dull and lifeless and yeah. it had a bad hand. It didn't right. lay, lay well. Right. And in order to get them pr produced, um, you know, to be uh, like the two more famous ones, both, I think one starts with an A, one starts with an N, the, both names escape me now. Um, uh, you'd have to spend quite a bit of money and then people just weren't gonna pay that kind of money for a scarf. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. I know. Exactly. I mean, you can go to TJ Maxx and get a beautiful scarf for $12, you know. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no, that's and, yeah. And if you're going to have it printed, well, and also there's the print, the printed ones with ink, and then there's the dyed ones. S the sublimation reactive, ones, yeah. Yes, with reactive dye. And um, no matter what you do, it's so expensive per square foot or inch or something like that, that it's, yeah. it's, you can't, and then you have to have them sewn, you know? You yeah, have you have to have them edges, hemmed, yeah. Ed, edges hemmed and so forth, yeah. so, and nobody, you know, so the silk things are prohibitive unless you're doing volume, you know, if you're doing, and then you'd have, so then you'd have to have department stores selling them. So it's just, you no, know, it's not, it doesn't work, but you know what, there's someone downtown now who's doing printing on, uh, on the Fazio? Yeah, on yeah. No, no, no. No, it's it's not, oh, oh, is that the surface design uh, yes. uh, on the... Um, on Union Street. Uh, Lawton's South Corner. Co Lawton's Corner. Oh, it used to be the, the Hayes, well, the Hayes Building and Jimmy's Hot Dogs was around the corner. Um, the, this is across uh, from the College of Visual Performing Arts. Yes, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, right yeah. in the corner there. Yes. Yeah, right uh, South Coast Zone. Surface Design. Yes, yes. They're printing. Yeah, mm. yeah. And she, she taught it, she taught continuing it at RISD and I, and I took a course with her. That's how she got here in New Bedford. She was looking for some place to, to do her printing. And wow, I'll, I'll, I'll have to pass that information on. Yes. Uh, let me ask you something. You said that there were thousands of John's paintings. Now, I've interviewed uh, our Dr. Richard Connor uh, for Art oh, School yeah. Magazine. I've been trying to get him on a show and, and uh, uh, it came very close. He's, you know, he's a really busy guy. Yeah. And he's the one that alerted me to this growing, uh, to me, anxiety of artist estates, especially those oh, of yeah. John's generation. Yes. Uh, that their family saying, we have no idea what this is worth. 
we don't want it to be ruined. We can't afford to store it. Are you, right. I don't want to bring something up that's not pleasant, yeah. but is, is that something that's crossed your mind? Oh, yeah. You've discussed? yeah. This is, um, it's a big deal. Even, I mean, and John was, when I was commuting for 20 years to RISD and working mm -hmm. nine to five or nine to 10 PM or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, John was home painting and also getting the kids to school and home then back and all of that. So um, he has so many paintings, but I also am looking in the garage where we store them. In. And when I was in Boston and when I was teaching it in Worcester, so that was another 15 years before we moved here. I, we have paintings, I have paintings that are huge because in those days, the idea was to make big, huge, mm -hmm. gigantic paintings that could hang on a gallery wall and, and dominate a, a, a wall somehow, you know? Yeah, yeah, dominate and then, space. And I think, what am I gonna do with all of these paintings, you know? And really, some of them are, are good and others I, embarrassed to look at them. I, I did that. Oh my God. You know. <laughs> uh, well, it's funny because I, I was uh, interviewed Laurie Wolf last week, uh, Jack Wolf's widow. And she said, one of his pieces is 30 feet long. <laughs> and, and then, you know, they would love to sell them because the, the whole idea is not just the sales and it's just not reducing your inventory. But <laughs> I mean, these were made to be seen, to be enjoyed, to be loved. And yes. Life, uh, a life a, someone's life's work you know yeah. and so it's um it's a, a dilemma of sorts i mean i have two kids mm -hmm. and john had two kids from his first marriage too and we give them paintings um but we so it's um i'm not sure how how we're going to deal with it i think we're talking about it and i i don't around here also new england is not really a, a strong market or visual arts, especially if it's abstract. So, and we're both abstract. I'm oh, sorry. I remember writing something in an artist statement or whatever. It, uh, it said something. Trying to be an abstract painter in in a seacoast town is is ludicrous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? really. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They want, they want boats and water. You know. Yes. Yes. In the marsh. Don't yes. The marsh. Yeah. And um, motif number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very, you know, and I think, um, it also, I think it's very, like Boston, I mean, it's very literary. It's a very verbal and literary kind of environment. So I think there's a lot of um, emphasis on the written word and the meaning of the written words. And then, so even art, I think people want to be able to say what they're seeing and what it means to them. And I know, like, for John and for me, I feel like it's... Um, is a visual experience almost and you bring yourself to it and enter in in your own way mm -hmm. and kind of look at it and, and travel in it somehow and uh, not try to figure out what the artist was going to say i don't i don't know that to me that's not so important you know i think it there's something that comes through and it's not verbal Exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah, because up until recently, my whole thing was, uh, my goal was to paint nothing, which is the most difficult thing to do as an yeah. abstract painter, Yeah. and that I would do so totally cold-blooded, and um, and in Europe, I, you know, I had much more success, uh, it's, it's a totally different uh, situation yes, there than yes. it is here, well, you know, being in Florence. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and um, and yet women, for some reason, would really get agitated with me when they would look at my work and say, what do you mean there's no emotion? What do you mean it's nothing? And they would go on and start describing <laughs> things which only I knew. So oh. that's kind of a shock. And, you know, yeah. uh, to, to the senses. Right, now, right, right. Now, describe your work. What does your work uh, uh how um, where is it evolved to or? well i think more recently um some of the people i love are like bryce martin and um, ross bleckner and 
uh, some uh, Cy Twombly, and I think I could go on and on. Um, and so they're they're pretty uh, obviously pretty abstract, but I, but I also like some other. I remember liking Elizabeth Murray a lot and Jennifer Bartlett at a certain point in time, abstract image. So I kind of evolved from abstract image to, again, almost like you, not wanting it to be something. I wanted it to be, I wanted it to have be um, a, an energy field of some kind that felt that it could keep on generating, keep on going, even once I, once you got off the edge of it. So they're kind of fields, but they mm -hmm. do relate to, I do start with a kind of idea of a, an experience um, that's biographical, I would say, most mm -hmm. likely. And, and then I try to focus on some aspect of that experience. But then I get started and um, I think halfway, I don't then evaluate it based on if it seems to be saying what I thought I was tackling, uh, then it, at a certain point it it ha it comes into its own state, and it's I need to do what I think it's um, would make it be interesting, and and that really has to do with the formal elements of it, the formal elements of line and color and juxtaposition and contrast and and what. Um, how your eye moves around the, the canvas basically and where it, where it goes stops and starts and goes back and and uh, again it's it was if i see like sometimes i bring up something to, for john to look at and he'd say oh i see a face i go uh oh and then uh -oh. i run back downstairs <laughs> yeah you can't get that out right <laughs> and take yeah. out the face <laughs> yeah. yeah where where <laughs> so yeah. So really, it's a, I would say probably it's a field, mostly, and color. Um, that, that but I do think it has some emotional um, aspect to it. You know, I don't for sure. I mean, the last painting I just did was I had overworked. I think I've been working on it for three years, and it was like it's probably been about five different paintings, five different finished paintings that I should have left alone. And now it's a finally the last finished painting. <laughs> and it's very dark and someone, color wise, it's very dark and it's very woven kind of mm. thing. And, and I think it does have to do with, and I, I call it nascondo, which means I, I'm hiding. I should have said nas, nascondando, hiding. In yeah. the, um, I'm trying to remember that part of speech with its ing, you know. But anyway, um, in Italian, yeah, yeah, yeah. in 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 the, in Portuguese, it's very similar. It's uh, iscund, iscund, iscundido, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yeah. I forget. So I'm usually pretty good with grammar, but you know, now I'm at that age, I forget everything. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I called it nascondo. I meant hiding, but yeah. And it, it does have to do with things that are lurking and it lurking and things that we don't know that are going on and uh, pretty serious things, I would say. You know, yeah. Kind of uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, uh, only because I become obsessed with this. Uh, at first, at first it was the movie. And then I said, you know, I'm going to read the Don book, which I'm reading now. And it's a night train to, um, to uh, Lisbon by uh, Pascal Mercier. Oh. And uh, the movie starred Jeremy Irons. It's uh, somewhat oh. different from uh, the, somewhat different from the book itself. Uh-huh. Um, uh, you know, because they couldn't contain 500 pages into, into one movie. Right. And uh, I think at our age and with our experiences, it sort of sets you back a little bit. It's 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 very very philosophical. Yeah. In fact, yeah. it became almost a cultish kind of a thing because it's about Amadeo de Prado, who was a a Portuguese physician, uh, who was a genius, and he mm. knew that he was living with an aneurysm. Oh. And, and any day it could go off yeah. on him. Right, and right, right. He would observe things, and then again, being a highly intelligent man, 
and also too with the Portuguese, their 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 language abilities are are just phenomenal. I mean, look at the Pessoa, Saramaggio, all you know, Coelho, all of these incredible authors. They just have a way with words. Yeah. Uh, yes. But it 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 brought it brought quite a bit of peace, um, quite a bit of understanding, quite a bit of shock, in some ways. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. to, to, to be looking into it. And he, you know, for a guy, for a guy who always said, you know, he was trying not to be emotional and, 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 there, and everything in his work, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, uh, it, it's, it's highly emotional. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, and it's quite good as well. Um, you, when you were talking uh, before as well, you reminded me what Laurie Wolf said about her husband, Jack, having um, uh, stuck up on the wall of his studio. Um, the conception must not precede the execution. Uh huh. Yeah. So there's right, a whole right, right, different right. way of looking at how to approach right. work from that from that that standpoint. Yeah. You know. Not um, an illustration. It's not an illustration of an idea. No, it's and then you know, you else. you probably went through this as well. I mean, uh, back back in art school, we all had to do preparatory sketches and studies, and then when you got one that was really nice, then you would make a painting. And then I remember saying. I'm an abstract painter. This is ridiculous. I'm making a painting of a drawing. <laughs> so I, yes, I, yes. I would use the drawing and, and that's something I've got to go back to again, but my drawings and my paintings, I could never marry them uh, because it's a different medium. It's yeah. a whole different tactile experience. Yeah. Same uh, here. And a drawing doesn't, a drawing doesn't come up the way a painting comes up. Yeah, yeah. Because right. I remember there was a period where I had, you know, the 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 conception in my head, and I would hit I would hit the easel, and then within yeah. five minutes it was it was not even anywhere close. It was like, what the heck was that? Was it I wanted to do it and it'd be on its own, you know? Are we are we like the same person, Ron? Yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a weird thing. I, I'd love to I'd love to be able to you know do a topical series uh, with, within these podcasts of uh, yeah. of how people work because uh, there are people who are similar to you know, obviously us same, now. Same thing for me because I love drawing. I have a sketchbook of drawings and mm -hmm. um, and I want to do more drawing actually now that you mentioned this. Um, but I can't translate the drawing into a painting either. I really, it just does doesn't work at all. Not no. nothing is the no. same. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's absolutely true. And then the other thing too is because of being, I think, well, I'll just blame it on the on the astrological sign. Uh, being a Virgo, it, it's I compartmentalize things without realizing I've compartmentalized them. Uh, so when I start a painting, it's not just going to be a painting. No, no, it's got to be a series. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I've got to keep going on this theme, you know. Oh, uh, nice. And it's like, well, well, how about if you did a drawing of this theme? Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, well, you know what? That's really interesting because I really criticize myself because I don't think I'm capable of doing a series. I really, I like, I think there's something missing in my brain. Really? Yeah, I can't, I, I, I mean, I think there's similarity in my paintings, for sure, you can tell, probably tell that it's the same person did them. I don't know if you saw my, inst have you seen my Instagram page? I think I have, yes. Oh, yeah. wait a minute, not Instagram, my, wait a minute, my website page, well, that's right, website. Uh, no, 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 I haven't, no. Oh, no. my website, all right, so all right, that's Yeah, because like, you've got to supply me with all that information so I can put it on the post page. All right, yeah. well, you'll see, you'll see when I, yeah. when you see, this is when I got my, my iMac when I retired mm -hmm. from Risi, which was now nine, 2009, I retired. Mm -hmm. So my computer's pretty old now, you can see that, but I've had to upgrade it. But when I, I got it, um, I, they, it came with iWeb. So I did my own little web page, which is pretty primitive. But anyway, mm -hmm. but it, there it is. And I'm not, I'm not ready to change it yet. Cause, oh, yeah. cause I, I tried doing a web page for the scarves. Oh my God. I think I just want to forget all about that and get get back to just yeah, I know what you mean. Simpl simplifying things. And I thought I I'm not making any money. I mean, maybe I made $2,000 profit in a year, you know, and all the time and effort and everything else. And I'm thinking, oh, I think maybe just don't spend $2,000, you know, yeah. uh, a year. So. At any rate, um, yeah. I've so my my website is on iWeb still. GoDaddy tries to get me to take it out of that platform, but 
I'm oh yeah, they're ready. trying to get you to go to WordPress. Yeah, which is yeah. it's not all that difficult to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> this is a difficult question. Um, where where do you see things in the next year or in the next couple of years? Uh, that's a good that's a good question because my daughter is now married and my son is has been with a, his girlfriend for a couple of years and. I, I think she's a New Yorker. They and they met at, at RISD and went out for a while. And then they didn't go out for a while. And he went to he worked in Colorado and then he worked in Los Angeles and then he came back and then to New York and they they met up again at a RISD thing again. And um, so they've been going out. So and she's her her mother still lives in the same zip code that she always lived for her entire life in New York City. So. John, I mean, Charlie tells me Fabiana is not leaving New York City. <laughs> so I'm thinking, all right, so both my kids now are in New York City and I'm down here. And now John is in a nursing home. He's 80, going on 87. He's now more than 86 and a half. His birthday is in mm -hmm. December. So I have to figure out what am I going to do next? I don't know, really. Um, and then in terms of my of artwork um i just to me it's very nurturing it nurtures my sense of my soul and my my spirituality in a way which is seems funny but it's it's um it's it's just like a health thing it's a spiritual thing it's a pleasurable thing mm -hmm. so i just want to be able to do things that I love to do that make not only um, I think have something to do with an expression of being a human being on this earth right now, but uh, also something that is particular to me, you know, and although I don't want to do any more big paintings because I don't know what I'm going to do with them. <laughs> so Sometimes I, th I think maybe I'll do something different, you know, than than works on paper or canvas. Maybe I'll do something mm. else. I don't know what. <laughs> yeah, you never know. You never know. I'm not. A, I'm not good at planning. You know, to tell you the truth. I mean, I think um, that's probably an understatement. <laughs> Seat of the pants kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, some of that is good. Uh, that's for sure. Because, uh, you know, um, sometimes, sometimes you just have to, uh, uh, sometimes you just have to go with the flow. Uh, one of my favorite movies uh, for a bunch of reasons is, uh, and people think it's funny, is uh, Forrest Gump. And I've always been fixated on that feather <laughs> since the first day I, I saw the movie. And, um, and I've had these incidences with feathers, which were like um, uh, harbingers of of, of good uh, goodwill and, and good fortune. Uh, they would always signal something that was going to be good. Uh -huh. uh, and then uh, in a conversation with a friend, I said, you know, this this thing of it's kind of weird because like you know you, you now you wait for the feather, you know, and that's yeah, not yeah. that's not the concept. So I said, I think I'm just going to be the feather. Yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> which for a Virgo is difficult because again, it's lists of lists of lists and all these other things. And things do get accomplished. I notice that there's a pattern of so many months by the time something gets done. And it's not because of, of uh, I'm vacillating or because I'm procrastinating. It's just that there's a rhythm and um, yeah. you know, you've, you've got to get used to it. Um, I would like to have you come back on the show now that you know how painless it is and speak you. primarily about John. Okay. Uh, because one of the goals of the artist index is to make sure that people like John and other artists uh, from this area don't, um, don't fade away. Um, yes, and, and we're going to have a show at the Marion um, Art Center that, well, was going to be next summer, but I don't know when it's going to be next, next. so mm -hmm. together, because our, our work looks really fits well together, and, um, as I said before, somehow we 
bounce off of each other mm -hmm. in, in a way that's really interesting, I think, and nice to look at, you know, that kind of thing. So that would be great. That'd be super. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Pat, thank you so much. And uh, we're going to wrap this up. And um, the, the, actually, the final question. Um, how would you like to be remembered? Ah, uh, all right. That's a good question. I wish I had been thinking about this. Um, I'm looking around at some of my paintings here. I think some of, I like some of my work, I feel, stands the test of time. I think it, like, even me living with it, if um, there are some things I look at, I go, oh my, you know, like I said before, well, I did that. Oh God. Um, but other things resonate over time and those those are the things that i think i'd like to be remembered for and i would like to be remembered as an artist um i think i feel like i'm i was more of recognized as an artist when i was in worcester as, and teaching at the Worcester art museum and involved with the art community there and then um in boston also when we lived there and also i had gone to school there as well so and in New Bedford, I almost, as soon as we got here, practically, I left to go five days a week to Providence mm -hmm. every day as an administrator, which I'm like, oh my God. So, um, <laughs> but I did <laughs> learn a lot, but I feel like I haven't been as immersed in the art community. And now I'm older and I don't, I'm not like a joiner. I don't really like to go to a whole lot of group kinds of things mm -hmm. and uh, I've become I think a little more and this is interesting I think I've become a little bit more like John who was much more into his own world you know and I was more outgoing and mm -hmm. now I'm getting more uh, more introverted <laughs> and enjoying my own time I'm really happy I don't have to get up and rush to mm -hmm. work and spend all of my day all of my energy everything for doing something that's a good thing and made uh, gave me a paycheck but um you know it's it's not the same now i have my time which is very valuable yeah. to me so i think i'm trying to create a, a nice environment to live in and then i would and i still have my i have my studio which is on the garden level which is really nice mm -hmm. and i do like to have people see what I'm working on. That's really. Um, yeah, we'll have to get together. I'll, I'll, I'll bring the wine. Uh, all you know, right. I'll, I'll, you know, my wife and I'll try to get down there because we, you know, she has a, an incredible collection uh, of her own, and and we we like other artists. We don't like the art scene as much as other artists. You know, yes, it's a more yes, of a one-on-one yes. -on -one kind of a of a situation. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, and I have space. We can sit outside and. Did be have distance and do all that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, you also reminded me as you were closing uh, your, your closing statement about the the old Scottish saying, "Enjoy life for you are a long time dead." Yes, yeah. I think yeah. we think of I think of that now that I'm older and <laughs> yeah. I want to savor. I want to savor. That's the word. That's the these, word. That's these the word. Days, really. Yeah. And, yeah. And I had I had cancer twice. Oh. So right now I feel, I definitely feel, uh, first of all, I feel like nothing is sure, like tomorrow everything could change, but I also feel, thank God I'm alive. <laughs> my, yeah, my sister-in-law uh, survived breast cancer as well, and uh, it was a very, very scary thing for her. And, yeah. uh, and you know, before that she had bouts of vertigo. She thought that was the worst thing that could happen to her. Oh, <clears throat> that's it. yeah. Right. I, the second time I had it, I had breast cancer twice, and the second time it was stage three, so it was well, pretty serious. And yeah, yeah. Well, so, but I'm here now. I'm here. My grandmother, sure my Norwegian grandmother, had. I guess she had breast cancer. We don't know. But, you know, we were little, mm -hmm. and you only have one breast. We never said, "Oh, why do you only have one?" <laughs> so she had one mastectomy on one side, and but she lived to be eighty nine. So yeah. yeah. You never um, know. Hanging on to that. Exactly. Well, Pat, Kumi Thornton, thank you so much for being our guest. And uh, this is Ron Forty, the host of, uh, of this uh, In Focus podcast, saying thank you so much and be
Be kind to each other out there. We'll see you next day, next time. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. We'll see you next week for another episode of the South Coast Artist Index podcast. The South Coast Artist Index podcast is brought to you in part by Heavenly Spirits, who invites you to celebrate the art of life and creative communities everywhere. Learn more at heavenlyspirits.com. To learn more about the South Coast Artist Index, visit theartistindex.com. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Be the artist you believe you are, and let's take care of each other out there.